goodness, he must be walking. He'll come in sweaty and everything. <laughs> we can go. We go. Yeah. We go walk about. Yeah. You want to come and bring that into the NFP office? NFP office is that little tiny one right there, just where the coat hangers are. First of all, I'm happy to be a woman in Parliament. It isn't easy being a woman in Parliament, um, and the kinds of things that are said about certain women in Parliament don't really help in our quest to get more women to stand for public office. Um, for example, uh, we've had comments about the way we dress, not only from other members of Parliament, um, but from members of the public. Uh, we've had, uh, I've been called a former beauty queen by somebody from the other side during a debate. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, but in our, in our quest to, to encourage more women to put their hands up, to stand, say, in the next elections, it, it doesn't make it very easy for us to convince women. Uh, the, you know, like Lenora, when she first, uh, when I heard that she'd, um, that her name had been accepted as an NFP candidate, I said to her, Lenora, congratulations, you're now coming into politics. First thing you have to be mindful of is you have to develop a thick skin. You just have to develop, develop a thick skin. That when you're there talking about you, it's like they're talking about someone else. Because if you took it personally, you'd be in tears every day. Because they are men, they are talking to you as a woman, and you'd, uh, you'd think, you know, no man has ever spoken to me in my life before like this. But then you just develop a thick skin. They're talking about somebody else. You don't uh, think twice about it. So that's what, uh, you, you just have to develop, develop a thick skin. I'll always be like uh, in 2000, from 2016, 2000, no, 2018, 2019, I was really rough on Sodelpa. Uh, including the Marambale Larok Tinjoketi, who is a paramount chief from Burma mm. and really uh, my mother's aunt, so a grand aunt. So, I mean, I, 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 Fijians are very good at compartmentalizing, eh? yeah. In person, no, I'm not, you know, I would, I, I would rather just stand back because I'm not someone who can pretend. Eh? I'm not going to go up and cozy up and shake hands and ring if I don't really want to. So in that situation, if I see them because of the, the traditional thing, I'll just stay away. Like stay away. Mm. But if I'm there, I will continue to be in front. But they, I don't want them to think that I am somehow, and they know me so well, they know. <laughs> like I just don't agree with their politics at all. But I will go through the protocol. Mm. In the, it's a different setting. Mm. Sorry, did you want to set up somewhere? Oh. I don't know, like, uh, <laughs> I haven't really thought that far, like, I was like, okay, we'll the post and get it. Oh, nice. That's been my campaign, and then we just kind of... Wing it. Yeah, yeah. This is playing to an international audience. Can you explain what, like, why that happened? Why I was dropped from I, the I, I list? I don't understand, so, so what, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what happened was I put in an application to represent the People's Alliance in these general elections, the 2022 general elections. And we went through an interview process with a panel and I was really excited when I got the call that you know I was gonna be one of the candidates. They made the public announcement in a big stage open area. We went up, we gave our little speeches and that would have been May, so we're in November now. The writ of elections was announced about a month ago now. And so what our party, all the parties did then is give the full lineup of candidates that they were going to present, right? That morning, I got a call to come into the office before going to the venue where they're making the announcement. And then they told me there that they had dropped me from the list, that I was no longer a candidate. And so that was a shock because, you know, I've like, I've sacrificed everything for this season. Like I've stopped my consultancy, we've had to sell a car, like financially it's been difficult. And I'm coming from 
zero political experience, right? So I've had to build a following, I've had to go out. So it's been a really um, long, hard six months. So that was a shock and I wasn't given a clear answer. However, the party leader made the decision, so I didn't understand why. Anyway, what happened then in the next couple of days, there was a whole lot of crazy publicity because, you know, first of all, I'm a woman and I, I think dropping a woman is gonna attract attention, right? Because they're trying to get more women into politics. But also by now, I have got a huge following. So, you know, well over, like, probably over 15,000 now following and social media my following. social media following sorry um, and I've been out in the public spaces so and so when they told me then they dropped me cause a whole lot of publicity then a few days later so they sent all of those names up without mine to the elections office and then three of them were rejected and so my name came back in again so now I am back as a confirmed candidate so that's really the most stressful thing that's happened since the writ of elections was issued. As a woman, um, indigenous woman, I feel that my last, this, this current term, um, will perhaps change the way indigenous communities see indigenous women in politics. I think it will, I think it shone a light on the indigenous women in parliament, on the um, Fijian indigenous women in parliament. And I think it's, uh, you know, just based on votes, for example, and, and I use this a lot and it makes me laugh and it makes other women laugh too when we have these, you know, women in politics workshops is I had two people from my own village vote for me in the 2018 elections. Two people, you know, and somebody else and they voted for males more people voted for male politicians in the 2018 elections in my own village. Only two people voted for me. I know that this is going to change in the next elections, but it's taken me this long to establish myself as a leader, as somebody who can be seen or looked up to as, as, a, as a, a government leader. So um, again, another interesting thing that I've, uh, that I've, uh, that I've come into is uh, I'd like to see more women in, in Parliament. And um, we've, we've had a, a consistent number of women, but minimal. Uh, but during this campaign, I'm excited that there's uh, 36, 36 women who are contesting to, to join, uh, you know, to, to get into Parliament. Uh, for our party, we have nine women and uh, we are working that all nine of us will get in. I think the misogyny is always there. It just depends on your filters, you know. Uh, as I say, you know, you have a finger pointing at you, but you have three fingers pointing back at that person. So I tend to let it slide off my back, you know, like don't sweat the small stuff. It says more about them than it does about me. So I don't really let it bother me that much. Uh, whether it's increased, Again, because I don't take any notice of it, um, I do hear it, but I don't let it bother me. We've got bigger things, bigger fish to fry. You know, it was only when I was forced to confront the issue of misogyny, then I uh, looked back, reflected, and then kind of accepted, because maybe I was going into denial, then I accepted that that was a clear case of uh, misogyny. Uh, and uh, it was like that because the um, female members of our, um, of our party were in the minority. And for, the, for a female member to be holding those positions, and if you came from a, um, a very male-dominated or dominated or patriarchal, patriarchal kind of thinking, of course that would be unacceptable. Uh, also at that time, I felt very isolated and, uh, you know, alone, because nobody in the party was coming up and, uh, and saying, you know, we disagree with all these things that are in the, in the, um, in the media. You know, we, you just have to, you have to learn to, you know, had they given me some words of comfort, I might have, 
uh, um, I might have felt better about the whole situation, but I felt so isolated at that time. And I was thinking, maybe everybody else is thinking the same as these, uh, as these people. You know, maybe they want me out, but I, I didn't have any, any choice to, to get out of that leadership, uh, leadership role. But it was a good lesson. We learn. We live and learn. Mm. I would like to see more women representatives in, par in, uh, in uh, Parliament. Why do I say that? Uh, a lot of my work is with women. I believe that women can move the nation. Uh, you just have to look at the communities, um, at the homes, it's the mothers that are driving it. In the communities, it's the mothers that are driving it, and the aunts, and the bumbos, and in the churches, it's the mothers that are driving it. And so if you have mothers in parliament, you'll be assured that we will you know, move and drive things that are very family-centered, very family-centered, and that will be wholesome. And uh, yeah, and I want to make sure that I'm still alive to actually witness a woman prime minister in Fiji. Uh, that would be my ultimate uh, dream. And uh, I hope that I am a stepping stone to, to making that happen to any woman that is aspiring to, to that office.